Slow Motion Videos 82 here. It's time for another toy build. Um, I had so much fun with the last one and I know you guys enjoyed it. So I had aforementioned Sergeant Savage Iron Panther. I called it the Iron Tank, but it's the Iron Panther. Very cool. Hold on. Asthma. <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> a little respiratory joke. Uh, so you want to take a look at the box. And, uh, Kubrick's work on the front. Uh, this was purchased from a store called AAFES. I'm not sure what that store is. Um, I could read bar or, um, these sticker codes sometimes because a lot of retailers, when they get something, uh, the first few digits, when they used to do price tags, the first few digits are the month and the year. So this is 495. This, they received this in April 95. So we have definitive proof that this had come out in 1995. Uh, aside from the date stamps, but they received this in April, so that gives you a pretty good idea of what year or um, what month it was released. Uh, Seven dollars and eighty-seven cents for this. Uh, I paid a lot more than seven eighty-seven, uh, I, so I really regret not purchasing this back then. But uh, good look at the box on the back. Um, uh, so this did come out in 95, uh, Sergeant Savage, the line only lasted for that one year, and, um, that was pretty unfortunate, like I had mentioned in my last build video of the P-40 Warhawk, um, which I did get batteries for it, so I'll show you that here in a minute, but when I we did the build on this, I had mentioned that this is a, a pretty decent toy line. The only problem I have are is the, are the hands. They don't hold the weapons in a way that I would I was used to with you know GI Joe where you could actually you have a thumb that's more conducive to holding a weapon. So they went back to that old um, style of hand grip. But that was the biggest problem I had with it. So now, as promised, the P-40 Warhawk. Push the button here on the bottom. The propeller doesn't spin as fast as I would like, but for a toy that's running off of one little motor, the main play feature is obviously the Gatling gun. The motor was by it, or the propellers by itself has been a lot more faster. But there you have it, guys. That's pretty decent. I like that. So let's go ahead and pop this sucker out of the box. Set that off to the side. Oh, what do we got here? We got goodies in the box. Goodies in the box. Ah. Uh, decal sheets so yeah um, this is pretty cool uh, instruction book came with two sets of instructions um, they're both in English that's kind of interesting uh, just in case you lose one it came with two sticker sheets again you know that's a first for me uh, So let's go ahead and pop this open. The instruction sheet, and let's pull these out. Well, one of the stories that I was telling, um, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know I, I love to tell stories, especially um, about my childhood and uh, what impact the specific toy had. But um, this last story, one of the stories I had told that got cut out when my video feed decided to take a dump, um, was 
I was um, talking about the desert heat. Is it starting to get warm out here? Um, I was, when I was in college, I was working as a security guard at a local mall. And a family decided to come, go to the mall, but the mom and dad thought they were only going to be in the store for a very short time and thought it would be okay to leave their toddler in the car sleeping, but they left the engine running and the air conditioner on and the doors locked, thinking it's going to be okay, you know, air conditioner's running, we don't want to be bothered kind of thing. But little did they bother to think that in order for your car to stay at a comfortable, cool level, the engine has to be running at a higher RPM instead of at a, an idle. So, guess what? The car got hot, and this was during the summer. Um, out here, the hottest it's been on record was 122 degrees. Um, that was back in 1991, I think it was. But even then, most of our summer days are 110 or better. And this poor little girl was locked in this Ford Ranger. And she woke up she was screaming well for one she woke up mom and dad aren't there and she's in a strange parking lot so would you know she's going to be scared well a um, very vigilant citizen saw this and uh, got a hold of us right away well there's a police substation inside the mall where I was working and so we always had the police there to help us out. So, of course, um, that was the, they, my co-workers affectionately called me the crap magnet. Because if I were anywhere I was, I always ended up finding trouble or trouble found me. So I said, well, I'm not a crap magnet. I just do my job. Um, so, Anyway, um, this was one of those incidents. So I'm out there on mobile patrol in the car, or in our, um, we have a truck. So I'm out there with the police, and we're, uh, I was on one side, one door, a cop was on the other, and we were working the doors with Slim Jims trying to unlock it, and there was another one trying to pry the back window open on this 1990-something Ford Ranger. So we were unsuccessful. I ended up popping the door lock off the key, where you put the key in. That fell out. So the cop came around from the other side, tried jamming a screwdriver in there. That didn't work. The fire department was there by then. So they made the decision to cut the back window seal off and uh, open the window, the back window that way. So they pried the whole window apart and um, we got the little girl out um, she was whisked right into an ambulance and they started the process of cooling her down and um, by this time the parents came out and after a good thrashing verbal thrashing by uh, the police department they went to the hospital with their daughter well long story short kind of thing um the family turned around and tried to sue the mall for the damage on their truck because the insurance company wanted to know why the door lock was broken and the back window was cut out and they needed a police report and the police report read exactly what i told you and the insurance company said absolutely not that was negligent so, needless to say, they did not win the case at all. So, that was um, kind of a thanks but no thanks situation. You know, if you very much have a nice day, 
type of attitude from that family. And I remember them giving me a dirty look as they left court because I got subpoenaed. And so did the cops. And But it was just a big mess. And it, um, you know, that was just one of those things. But the little girl's fine and everything worked out. And, you know, no permanent damage to the child. Uh, but that's just one of the dangers of you know the hot car situation if it were these days the parents would have really i'm sure would have been put in jail and the kid taken away okay so what it says here slots and posts there is a left and right on this very cool looking shell of this tank it is angled so any munitions hitting it will deflect that's why they're angled there are there's a left and right door so I will hold these up together so you can see left and right hatch so we got to find the one that matches up the little jagged grooves will go over this side so let's go ahead and squeeze that in. This is made out of a harder plastic than the airplane. So slot those both in on the posts. So what I'm doing is just lightly squeezing these together one side into the other. Voila, nice tight seal. Uh, doors and posts. Now, the whip antenna or aerial for everybody in the UK has kind of a mushroom peg, slots right into here. Very cool. Um, so, let's see, back panel storage. Snap back panel slots into holes. Shovel, sledgehammer, store in a rear turret as above. Okay, back panel storage. So it's this little piece right here, and it fits into those holes. So that explains why you have to put the aerial in first. Snaps in, and that feels like it'll never come out. So, it came with a sledgehammer and a little shovel. And what do I do? I lose it first thing. So, the sledgehammer looks like it'll fit right into the bottom. And the shovel right there at the top. Sledgehammer to help out. And those actually fit in pretty nice you can see if you can see that they go into these little slots here on the side right there pretty decent okay three tread assembly turn tank over align tread holes with tank posts push tread down until tab snaps into place repeat with the other tread so there is no left or right tread. These are the tank posts. If that shows up, you can see that they stick up. So you'll want the bland, what I would call the bland side on the inside and the bogies facing outward. And see, it's the front of the tank. So well, there, are, there are left and right. So I'm going to put the higher end on the left side. No, it does not want to go in, so let's try it on the other side. That's better. Okay, so... This is the back end of the, the tank tread. 
And uh, speaking of the mall, I remember uh, when I was working at the mall in high school, I had played hooky one day. I just did not want to go to school. So here I am walking into work, and guess who comes walking out of the mall? <laughs> Two teachers. One was my history teacher. And he looks at me. Uh, Kurt Saunders was his name. And um, he looks at me and he says, Byron, why weren't you in school today? I said, oh, I had a sore throat. And he said, uh-huh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So it has you snapping in the, the posts before the axle assembly, and that seems to be a bit of a... I would suggest that you put the axles together first, put them in between the treads before you snap them into place, because you have to put a lot of force on these treads and spread them apart to get the axle in. So it's on these dumbbell wheels. So there we go. Five cannon assembly. Um, the two posts right here go into these two slots. So yeah, when I was in, in school, um, I did not like, like most kids, did not like going to school. Um, no, put it in upside down, idiot. Uh, part of the reason was my um, learning disabilities that I had with math and reading. And um, I got made fun of a lot because if I was made to read aloud instead of reading fluently, like turn tank up so right side up and fit cannon posts into turret slots and snap the cannon down into place, it would be turn tank right side. I read it word for word and I got made fun of a lot. And that was part of the reason. It wasn't because of laziness. Um, but I really regretted that later in life um, because there was a lot that I missed out on in education and um, my homework was a another problem. I don't like to do homework like most kids and um, you know my my I never well I failed history <laughs> um, but uh, I always passed my classes save for that history class with Mr. Saunders. So, um, yeah, it, when it came to college, I didn't, I had to really learn self-discipline for, for, um, my college classes and really focus on my homework, but it hit me different. Well, one, because I'm mature and two, I'm paying for that. And three, I'm learning something very critical that I have to know by heart because I'm going to be taking care of people. So, um, if any kids are watching, guys, please take it from somebody who's done this. Do your schoolwork. It'll, it'll serve you better in life. Okay, so it reads, Operation or Operating Cannon. To arm cannon, open lid of cannon magazine. So it has a lid here on the cannon magazine. It's empty on the inside. This is getting interesting and insert four missiles, close lid, and pull back, lock and load trigger. Um, push button to shoot missiles. Do not aim missiles into your, and at eyes or face. You know that kids were doing that. They were shooting their brothers and sisters. They were shooting each other, shooting the family pets, which don't do that. I was guilty of that, and I really learned that animal. That's how I really learned that animals have feelings, because my dog would or cat would just look at me like, "Why did you just do that? I did nothing wrong." So yeah, don't. And to this day, I feel terrible for that. Okay, so the four 
um, cannons are loaded or the rockets are loaded. Um, too bad this is solid black, you can't see it, but there's a lever right back here. Holy Sam, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so the gun does elevate on a ratchet. That was freaking cool. I shot my flat screen. Um, so should say don't aim at flat screen. So load it back. My finger had slipped off the trip, the cocking mechanism. It cocks back and it locks and the trigger is right here. So you can fire it. I'll just fire it right into my hand here. So you can see as it has some power behind it. That is such a freaking cool. I love that. So with the, it doesn't show up. I'm trying my best. Um, there are two slots, two ridges where these little missiles fit. And you can see that they have notches cut out in them. I'll put it right up here against my li lily white forehead so you can see it better. And those slot right in between the two missiles. And you just close the, the magazine. So there's the tank assembly. Very simple. Um, this looks nothing like a real world tank. The turret even spins to reveal more engine compartment and more technical stuff on it. This is a sweet, sweet tank. I am very impressed with it. And even on the front, you can see where it's ridged. Um, it ratchets, but it lines up perfectly. That is so cool. Uh, so sticker assembly. Um, I do not know what the acronym for iron is. Um, very interesting. Place with four inch GI Joe figures and accessories so you could fit your vintage or your modern GI Joe. This is 1994 Hasbro vehicles made in Indonesia. But 1994, then it came out in 95. Uh, they did come with the driver. We'll look at him later. Came with two guns. So he came with a reissue of... Um, this one looks like it came with... I keep on forgetting his name. He's one of the, the winter troops. And hit and runs little gun, which was his... rifle of some sort. Uh, I can't remember the name of that rifle, but um, this came with Hit and Run and later with Shipwreck and a bunch of other Joes. So pretty cool. Uh, two additional, two sticker sheets. So let me reach back here in my drawer, pull out a pair of tweezers, if I could find them again. Here they are. Oh, these tweezers are um, known as pickups. They're um, they have teeth. These are um, what I use to remove sutures at work. Um, it, these are made to be just thrown away after they're done. But I sanitized them and uh, kept them because when we get a fresh, what we call a fresh trach, a patient that just got a tracheostomy tube. They're sutured into their neck to hold it in place, allow the skin and the, the actual trachea, the actual trachea to heal around the tube. So after 10 days, we'll just go in and uh, lift up the sutures and clip them and pull them out. So yeah, I saved these, I sterilized them so they're safe to bring home and reuse because they're just going to be thrown away. The whole thing was made to be thrown out. And I checked with my boss. He said, yeah, if you want. He says, kind of gross, but okay, if you want. And I said, well, 
I soaked them in, the, in Sidex, which is a solution to sterilize equipment. He saw, okay, never mind. He said, yeah, feel free to take those home whenever you want. I said, okay, thanks. So I just asked because, you know, it would have been trash, but still it's something that the company paid for, and I, I just didn't feel right without asking. Okay, so sticker assembly. Um, so it let you look at those. It's a pretty sweet. Uh, so it says Panther. That's the name of the tank. Um, Iron Army Mechanized Division. So I'm going to pull that one off first. These are all paper. As we know in the 90s, they got away from the vinyl stickers. And they go right down here on the side of the vehicle, which is funny that they used paper stickers on the septic tank that um, was part of the Eco Warriors, and that tank was made to get wet, so the, a lot of the stickers are wrinkled. So that's how it looks. And yeah, guys, I love the septic tank. I know that a lot of uh, people out there don't like it, or there's closet fans that are afraid to come out and say, yeah, I like it, because they're afraid that other people are going to say, oh, well, you, you like the septic tank. Ooh. You know what? I don't care. I like the thing. Oh, yeah, it's bright. The colors are hideous to some people. But, you know, I'm, I'm an alley viper. I like those bright colors. Um, so it's the bright orange. Very cool tank. Made from a Hiss tank. The body of a Hiss tank. Okay, so the Iron Army sticker. Right there. Um, goes right here on the door flaps. Where you can put the action figure in. So let me go ahead and pull one of those off. But um, you know, Sar the Sergeant Savage line, I am really, really starting to take a shine to it. Uh, the first one I bought, I had mentioned, came with the, the um, VHS tape. So, uh, I had lost that somehow, and um, frankly, I had forgotten all about it until um, HCC Brian um, was reviewing it, and I started getting really nostalgic for it. I really missed that one because it was it was pretty decent. And there you go. Uh, so, I went and bought another one. Okay, so the next one on top of Canon, I will do the hatch release, which is this one, and it goes right underneath this triangular section uh, towards the back. So um, I, I bought it and it, and I really looked at it through a different pair of eyes. And I thought these guys were actually not all that bad. The story behind it is really cool. So, um, I think it would have been a little more successful. Um, one of my viewers mentioned, um, I had pinned his comment on the, uh, I think the, the quick look of the, de um, desert camo savage, um, that the toy line was made for a different generation of kids, but, um, also, for in the 90s, it was getting more focused towards adult collectors, which was true. You know, like um, 
the starting lineup figures, um, McFarlane were very, very cool figures, still are. Um, so it was getting uh, focused more towards uh, adult collectibles. So maybe Sergeant Savage was intended to be a part of that. Uh, these caution stickers go right back here. And um, so that was a very good point that he had made. So I, I was looking at Sergeant Savage at a different light and um, I really thought that and I still think that it would have done better if it would have been its own toy line and not focused under G.I. Joe which he had further mentioned that they were trying to take G.I. Joe down a different road for the new kid, you know, new generation of children and uh, it just didn't work, unfortunately. So there you go. And uh, so in lies Sergeant Savage with these toys that people were collecting to resell. And unfortunately, and sadly, I should say, they didn't make much money at all off of them. And people are are selling them now, but they are hiking the shipping price up. Like, for instance, I was looking at a General Blitz that came with a bunker with a sandbag like machine gun post. And... Um, the sellers want $17.99 plus $15.99 in shipping. That toy weighs less than a pound, so at most $4 in shipping, I I won't pay that. I, I just won't do it. Um, as I really feel that it's it's not right to double, triple, quadruple charge for shipping um, to make extra money. Just sell the toy for more and take the best offer but be honest with the shipping kind of thing i don't mind if you make like two or three bucks off of it fine i mean you know it covers gas going to the post office and your time to pack and materials i get that but you know really gouging the shipping so the top part caution um ammunition loading point so this one is his caution ammunition loading point goes right on top of the the cannon which this has to be the best bloody uh, spring-loaded missile launcher that I have ever ever seen uh, that really took me by surprise um, that was a genuine reaction. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, fits right on there. That was a genuine reaction. I just think that is the dog's bollocks. Okay, the other Iron Army. These fit right on the back on both sides here. So yeah, that that was that is just way too cool. Um, you know that that cannon and missile launcher. But I um, I don't mind the, those spring loaded launchers. They are just. I had more fun with those than I actually did with the action figures. So even though I was in my teens, you know, I would still get bored and I still have a little hankering to play with toys. So I would, what I'd do is line up my Joes and lo load up their spring launcher, their missile launchers, and shoot them all down with it. And I actually, oh, hold on a second.
so that's how those fit on there so I unknowingly honed my marksmanship skills as a kid playing with those little um, little guns that can you remember those little plastic guns that came with the plastic discs is kind of a futuristic gun one was silver and the other was gold and you'd load the discs into the side you could put like 15 of them in there and just mul fire multiple discs well I honed my marksmanship skills with that just through play and I'd set up my action figures and sit a little far back and pop, 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 shoot them down. I was playing, but I was actually, didn't know it, but I was becoming a marksman. Uh, these BB 7.11 go on the front of the, can of the tank. Bunker Buster 7.11, I guess. Or did I mess that up? Oh, let's see. Uh, no, yeah, it goes on the front. Okay, 7.11 goes right up here. And there's another one. Iron Army main battle tank. Another one of those goes up front. Just like so. Yeah, so, you know, I, that was how I played with my toys. I would load those up and shoot stuff down, or even with rubber bands. And another BB 7.11, it's a longer strip. And um, this caution sticker, they go up on the turret. Uh, so yeah that's really real how I outside of making them fight with each other um, I would line them up and shoot them down with rubber bands or with um, toy guns so let's do that and later on um, my when I was 14, I got a Red Ryder BB gun. I was joking around with my dad. I had no idea that BB guns were, but they still had a Red Ryder. And he asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said, Red Ryder BB gun with a compass and a stock and this thing which tells time. And uh, guess what I had under the tree? A Red Ryder BB gun, but it had a commemorative medallion in the stock. So those were the two stickers this one and this one that I placed so yeah a joke turned into something real which was pretty cool and the longer BB 711 goes on the back underneath the um, weapons rack or this um, tool rack so uh, I used that Red Rider BB gun and I really became a marksman with that. I would take it out into the desert and I'd shoot cans, shoot bottles. Yeah, I messed it up. Iron Army should have gone on the front. Let's see if I could peel that off. And, um,. We have a tree out here called Palo Verde, which is, which means evergreen. And yeah, the tree does re forever remain green. So there we go. I corrected it. And it gets these little seed pods on it. And what I would do is take 
my gun and I would shoot those seed pods out of the tree and I'd practice from long distances and I became very good with it. Um, I shot a fly off of a paper cup which my best friend did not believe that I did that until he looked at the paper cup and saw a smear from where the fly was. So, yeah, I really honed my marksmanship skills. I buggered up that sticker again. I got to be paying better attention. Um, so the Iron Army sticker goes right down the middle there. And I put it on crooked. But, um, yeah, I uh, definitely honed my marksmanship skills using that that BB gun and uh, my toy guns so I'm looking to see if there were more that I had missed caution fix the front snafu the rear snafu looks like I have extra stickers here, which is kind of unusual. Caution on the side. Iron Panther, got that on the front. Battle tank. In the Oh, here's another battle tank sticker in the back, which goes right above where the shovel is. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that. My dad told me if you ever caught me shooting a bird, that I would lose my gun. There you go. And I thought my dad could read our minds, so I never did shoot a bird. The only time I've shot birds is if I was out dove hunting, and I ate those. So, and that was his rule. If you kill something, you have to eat it. It's just the rule of nature. I haven't gone dove hunting in years. But I'm not real fond of dove. It's a dark meat. You know, we can really get the breast. Um, I I choked it down, though. Um, we have a, a limit, I think. The bag limit per day is like 10 or 15. So I would shoot my limit and go home. And I only did that once I was like, yeah, I, I don't like these. And squirrel isn't bad. Uh, I'd hunt those and the daily bag limit on those is 15. Rabbit we could hunt year round out here because they're mass population. Um, but I'm not fond of um, rabbit or hoss and pfeffer. Um, and coyote, you, we're allowed to, to shoot those year round, hunt those, but You can't eat a coyote. You have to be really hungry. Um, they're scavenger dogs, so their meat tastes like what they eat. And they eat, try to catch fresh stuff, but most of the time what they eat is already dead. So um, most people just hunt them for their pelts, and I will not ever do that. Kill an animal just for its pelt. That's just, it's, it's just wrong. Um... Because what do you do? You just leave the meat out there. But um, I did pop a coyote with my pellet gun because it had gotten into the neighbor's yard. So there you go. All set up. Very nice looking vehicle. Extra stickers. So I'll just hold on to these just in case they, oh, the driver. Let's take a look at the driver. Uh, but I'll hold on to those extra stickers. But if you need them, seriously, if you need them and you're watching this video, I'll, I'll hold on to them. I'm not going to sell them or if you even need the instructions, you know, let me know and um, I'll just give them to you. I, I won't sell those things. So the driver. He is 
pretty cool. I mean, broad shouldered, uh, blonde hair, um, because this was a, a German army. So he had the Aryan look to him. He has your standard G.I. Joe articulation, swivel arm. Uh, you can see the hands. I just don't like those. They, you know, his waist rotates around and his, his legs bend at the knee. Brown pants, black shirt. I like that look. Um, he has this baldric or a bandolier going across his chest and they didn't paint it on the pants. So that looks really weird. Um, he's wearing this field blouse with a red shirt underneath. Of course, he has the Iron Army insignia here on his chest. Um, wearing a tanker cap, kind of in a German Army style with headphones. Um, he has an empty holster on his right leg and on his le or on his left leg, sorry, and on his right leg he has um, an empty pouch. But um, let's see how he holds his accessories. This one isn't too bad. Uh, the M60 that came with Iceberg, I think was his name. Okay, he could hold that in a fairly decent pose. So, I mean... That's not too bad. These actually work because they have a grip on them. Uh, what the the figures that came with the other Sergeant Savage, they were more realistic and didn't have a hand grip on them. So to put the driver in, uh, you open the lid, open these hatches. Really? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, his head is also on a, a ball joint, so it looks up and down. Um, <laughs> there's no seat for him. So... That kind of sucks. He just sits in there really weird. You close the hatch, and these front parts here are actually windows um, right here. So if I open that other hatch, I'll show you. This is kind of a tricky thing to open. But if you could see my... I'll stick the gun through it. That shows up their their windows, but I'm not real keen on that. Oh, so I'll just stick his guns in there too. These hatches are kind of fun to close. They they're loose. snap into place. I'm sure you could put the weapons on the back, but I wouldn't want to. But, you know, all in all, this is a really cool toy. Uh, I don't have much many negative points to say about this, aside from the driver kind of just thrown in there willy-nilly. Um, it's, it's nice. The main selling point is that missile launcher where you could actually load in and rapid fire that that was that is a very cool idea um you know that i yeah <laughs> i'm still blown away by that but here it is the final look at the iron army panther
pretty cool so thank you guys very much I'm sorry this is a 50 some minute video uh, but I do really appreciate your support especially to my new subscribers and all your comments please please leave me comments I love hearing from you guys I love answering back uh, that's the highlight of my day with doing these um, definitely watch the video towards the end I should say that at the beginning because that really helps with um, getting my videos out there um, more exposure on YouTube uh, helps this channel grow and please subscribe when I reach 500 I'll be holding a giveaway and they will be good prizes I promise you these are things I would buy and keep for myself this isn't something that I just don't want and I'm giving it away because it's junk no I will never do that to you guys um, so here we go great looking tank Thank you guys again for tuning in, for subscribing. Big thanks to my channel supporters. You guys make this channel possible. And all of you make this channel possible. Um, so, you guys, you take care. Stay safe out there. Remember, safety sanitize six feet. Wear your masks. Um, talk to your doctor and family about getting vaccinated. Muy importante. That's how important it is. I'm saying in a foreign language. Um, very important to to do that. Um, you know, a little bit of discomfort, and it's done. You're you're inoculated. So this is a terrible disease. We got to stop it. So you guys take care. Stay safe. This is Joe Motion Videos eighty two saying, be kind to everybody, especially be kind to animals. They know nothing but unconditional love. Even though I did hunt, I'm sorry. but I did eat the meat. Take care. We'll see you next time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Until then.